you guys get back to the colony. Also, I mean, it doesn't matter to Alexa, but it's like very much nighttime now. Night, Schmate. That's just the other day. <laughs> Darker version of daytime. <laughs> Okay, so what are you guys doing once you land? I'm going to find Risen Soren. Kaz is going to see about that other shuttle. Elon is going to pass out. Okay. Yeah, Alexa, you find Soren and Riss uh, in the medical bay. Soren is like sitting right beside a bed that Riss is on, and he's uh, yeah covered in bandages and hooked up some, some machines that are monitoring his vital signs, and he's appears to be sleeping. And Soren is sitting there, also asleep. How's Soren's arm looking? Yeah, it looks uh, like no one's really done anything with it. It's just sort of there. That's sad. That was a really sad description. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it doesn't look like they've tried to treat it anyway. It just sort of has some scar tissue growing on it now. But he, he's, like, uh, sitting up asleep, or...? Yeah, he was, like, sitting in his in his hover chair and just, like, fell asleep. Obviously, you could, like, tell that he was, just, like, watching over Riss, and he sort of, like, fell asleep as he was doing that. I, I gently poke him. He, like, uh, flinches and, like, violently starts, like, oh, what's, go what? what's going on? And then when he sees you... He, uh, he calms down. He says, Lexa! You're back! And he tries to hug you. I, I give him a hug. I'm so sorry that we had to let the Sith capture you. But your friends found a way to save you? Yes, they did. And we, uh, we defeated the Sith who took me. That's good, but I'm glad that that I that we got you back, and so quickly. I'm sorry that 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 you had to turn yourself in, but thank you for saving both of us. And luckily, your brother is still alive. The doctors tell me that he's stabilized, but it's going to take a while for him to recover from his injuries. But he'll be all right. Yes, they said they said he should make a pretty full recovery. I just wish I'd been able to save you guys without any more damage. Yes, we might all walk away from this with scars, but at least we still all have each other. Where's the Scarlet Destiny? Like, he frowns and like a dark look comes over his face. Says, I don't know what happened to it. The Sith may have taken it. I'm sorry, Soren. I know how much that shit meant to you. He sighs. Yes. I'd say we should try to recover it, but if it's still in the hands of the Sith, we should stay away from them. I don't think it's worth risking our lives for a ship. No matter how important it is, I'd rather have you and Riss safe. Well, what are we going to do now? That's a good question. For now, I'm just happy to have you both safe. And we can save those heavier thoughts for 
later times, if you don't mind. No, of course. I have something I need to ask Riz, but I think he can wait. Yes. The doctor said he should regain consciousness sometime tomorrow. Um, it's not a question he can answer. It's something I need him to do. He should get his rest, though. Ah. Uh, well, I'm... I guess you caught me falling asleep, but I'm trying to stay awake so I can be here when he wakes up. If you'd like to wait with me. I will wait. And don't stay awake. Yeah, my account always. I will I will watch over both of you. He smiles. Okay. Just make sure you wake me as soon as you start stirring. Of course. And you can see he like his eyes like slowly close, but he's smiling and he falls asleep. I just pull up a chair and sit there and watch them. Okay, so what is everybody else doing? Eland is sleeping. Because is looking at so you're just gonna go look up over the shuttle and Okay. If it's night time, it's not really. There's not really much you can do at, at night because other people can't just meditate and do stuff <laughs> for the rest of <laughs> yeah, the Yeah, it's night. like midnight right now. So, because it's probably just going to take six hours of meditation. Yeah, I'll, I'll, probably, I'll probably be uh, somewhere. Have in the first chance to recover health. So, okay, yeah, you guys notice that as you meditate in the force, it seems like you can feel a difference now that there's not the taint of the shadow on you, even though you couldn't really feel it when it was there. You can notice that it's absent now, it feels very refreshing. Okay, so what does everyone want to do the next day? Well, I have two blasters I'd like to sell and inflate their price to <laughs> the road. <again. laughs> I'm probably going to go ask ask uh, Elon to help me with that, because I can't speak roadies. All right. Plus, he's better at talking to people than because <laughs> I just handed you the two blasters with the base price of a thousand. Heavy blaster pistols? Blaster rifles. Oh, blaster rifles. And you'll hear me whisper to you, I have 18 more on Vento. You had 18 more? They're on Ventoine, though. It'll have to wait. Alright. Two at a time, then. Yes, you don't want to flood the market. Yes. Something like that. Okay, so you go to talk to the Rodian? Yeah. We know he has a name, we just don't remember. His name is Orgerm Udo.
Ah, Elon, what brings you back to my shop at such an early morning hour? Looking to buy something? Ah, uh, no, looking to sell right now. Uh, oh, how was that tent that you bought? It was a mighty fine tent, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> not really. But, uh, that's beside the point. Not really? Then he, like, clutches his chest. You wound me. Well, perhaps we can make up uh, that wound in with uh, a little bit of a business proposition. Ah, what sort of proposition? And Pocket, as you said, a thousand per rifle? Yeah, that's the base market price. Okay, you want to sell them for a thousand per, okay. Well, I mean, you can sell them for however much you can get. <laughs> I was just letting you know out of character that that's the base market value of them. Okay. Now you're free to account for inflation on this planet. <laughs> well, uh, currently uh, I have a couple of rifles I'd like to go ahead and lighten my load with. Or at least my friend here would like to. Um, just to kind of help us out here. Ah, uh, yes, I'd be uh, happy to see what I can do to help you out and make your load a little lighter. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, make the load a little lighter would probably... Uh, it will increase business and return customers. Everybody loves return customers, don't they? Indeed, indeed. So, he, so let's see the goods. And he holds out his hand. And Elon will hand him one of the rifles. Because one rifle at a time is about all you can do. Okay, he looks it over. He says, well, this certainly isn't in mint condition. It looks like this was acquired from the middle of a war zone. It has a depleted power pack and there's some carbon scoring along here. Name one blaster rifle that's been used that doesn't have blaster scoring on it. A brand new manufactured one that's worth full price. Oh, I haven't said price yet, so... I think you may be jumping ahead of yourself here. Ah, well, I'm glad to hear that you realize the value of the things you have. Oh, that I do. I, I know what the uh, market price is for uh, at least a base one. Uh, I figure used, we could go down a little lower. I currently have two of these that we need to go ahead and get rid of. Ah, well, I suppose I could take them both off your hands for 500 credits. Each? Oh, no, 500 credits for both. Ah, uh, how about 700 for both, then? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, the, see here, the problem is that these, uh, these rifles require special permits. So, I have a very limited customer base in which to sell them. On a colonist planet that has... very special oversight, I am, I'm certain. He makes, like, a mock gasp. Certainly you aren't suggesting that just because the government has limited influence here that we do not follow all the rules of the Republic. I'm not suggesting that at all. Why would I suggest such a thing? Who have you been talking to? You might want to get your information straight then. Well, I'm glad you, you see our situation here. In order to sell this, someone needs to have a military permit in order to purchase it as well. That, uh severely reduces the number of uh, customers who are available. Ah, uh, that's true, but... Sorry, distracted by something completely, uh, completely off topic and unrelated. Yeah, Zeri, that's what distracted me. Mass call the place Dolores. <laughs> oh, 
I understand that, lad. Uh, but at the same time, this is probably one of the few markets where I could... could legally sell these, or could liably sell these without uh, much questions. I trust you and I know... And I, and I know what you're capable of. You're also a good salesman. Ah, yes. That's also another excellent point here. That the uh, price of our negotiation has to take into the fact that uh, there may not be a licensed seller that can actually sell me these weapons. Well, unfortunately, I happen to be uh, licensed by military, so unfortunately, I can't sell these things, so... Ah, excellent. Can I see your permit? Of course, here it is. And Elon will pull out his military license because he used to be in the military. And you have a military license for heavy blaster rifles? Or blaster rifles? Uh, for certain blaster pistols, not, uh, not certain about blaster rifles, but I do have one for at least a sniper rifle, so that's in the same category. Military grade weapons license. Yeah. Military. Unless I'm mistaken, you're supposed to have a different license for every type of weapon that you have. That seems absurd. Uh, yeah. That I mean, that is what. I mean, that's why we haven't been actually caring about that. But that's technically the rules. I mean, it depends on the planet and the actual rules on said planet. And the person who's actually trying to negotiate the deal. Oh well, it looks like here that the. Um, the blaster rifles actually aren't on this permit. Uh, I'm trying to find where, figure out where I found the sniper rifle. It's not on here, or at least not on my the first one that I have set up. You started it with it, didn't you? Uh, not the sniper rifle. I purchased it later, and it would have also had the license and whatnot to have it. So. You would. I think you purchased. You know, you probably purchased it from O Jim. Because <laughs> I think you, you've had it since my um, game. The rifle, the sniper rifle. I purchased. Yeah, you it. have the. You have the license for the sni sniper rifle, but it's not. Doesn't cover regular blaster rifles. That's what he's saying. You can try to roll some deception or persuasion to try to convince him that it does. I would have figured it would have been broken down into a category like blaster pistol or uh, pistol category, rifle category and whatnot, but okay. Yeah, unless it's an exotic weapon. That seems a bit much for it to be really... So if you look on page 118 or page 126 of the PDF, it says that basically the restricted item is that you need a license per the weapon that you have. So like if you have a license, it's for that one thing. So if you have a license for your sniper rifle, it says you can have the sniper rifle. It doesn't say you can carry as many blaster can rifles we, as you want. Can we house yeah, roll this, please? That just doesn't make okay. any sense. Like, I mean, if we're on our shada, sure, but like we've already established this business guy is crazy, so... I mean... I, I sort of feel it should be like having a license to own automatic weapons. I it sort covers of, automatic weapons. I sort of feel like you're all overthinking this and that Ojim is trying every angle to not get a decent price for this. Oh, I know things. that. We'll, we'll get to that after we're done with this. The two separate things that need to be dealt with separately. Uh, maybe then we deal with those things when and if they come up. Or now we need to resolve this interaction. Yeah, I'm not trying to say anything about whether you need actual licenses. That's why we, I think it's overly complicated. That's why we ever, haven't ever talked or dealt with it. I'm just saying that the store owner is trying to make that argument that you don't have a license for it, so you should get a better, cheaper deal. All right, my friend, how about this? How about we go to 625, since my license is apparently being GM cojoned, but that's okay. Okay, roll persuade. Wow, 
Wow, that's a unusually low roll for me. Okay, I'm using neck on that. Six twenty-five. Are you trying to run me out of business? Okay. I'm afraid I can't afford that. Uh, you and I both know that's a lie, but okay. Let's see about five seventy-five. How about that? Okay, roll persuasion. How about 550? How about 562? Okay. I'll pay you 562 for both of them. Ah, oh, thank you very much. And Elon will hand the 562 for both to Paquez. Wait, wait, wait. So do you not tell me anything before you tell me how much he's going to buy them for? Or am I just sitting here watching you back and forth in roadies and, and you just hand me 562 credits? All right, Paquez. The market price that he's, or the price that he's willing to go for is 562 for both rifles. What the rifles you? both all fly back into my hands and I walk start walking out. I'm sorry, <laughs> older gentleman. Yeah. Have a nice day. Come again. I'm sorry, older gentleman. I was trying to help out, uh, trying to help him out and such, but apparently he doesn't like the price and such. So. Ah, I understand. Maybe he'll come back later. Oh, perhaps he will. Alright, well, you have a good day. Here's five credits for you. Or at least for putting up with with uh, my shenanigans and such. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. You should be paid for... <laughs> you have a little jar that says tips on it, and you can put the five credits in there. Yeah, that's basically what it is. <laughs> It'll you should be paying really, us. Really, to put up with him. It'll at least... It, it's a little... Hey, I'm trying to take care of a friend who sh who swindled me last time, so... At least trying to make sure he thinks I'm a friend to him. Okay, so about around noon-ish, uh, Soren is still asleep, but Lexi, you notice that Riss, that his eyes start like fluttering. It looks like he's probably going to wake up. I wake up Soren gently. Okay, he sort of like starts again, but then he calms down when he sees you. Oh, is he, is he about to wake up? I think so. Riz? Riz, it's Lexa. Lexa? He sort of says, sort of groggily. Then he like opens his eyes and looks around and looks confused. Wait, what happened? Where am I? You're safe. You're safe in, in the local city. I rescued you. Do you remember? He, he, like, frowns in intense concentration. He says, I remember... Yeah, I remember us going down to the planet to be exchanged for you. So I don't really remember much after that. My friend How did you get away from the Sith? Oh. Well, you know me, I have my ways. I got myself out with a couple of friends' help. Well, that's good. And then he like looks down at himself covered in like bandages and all this stuff. 
And he says, well, it looks like things didn't go perfectly well. No, not exactly. But uh, you're going to be fine. Well, that's good. I never doubted you, though. I know. You never do. So it looks like we're going to have to stay here for a little while. Uh, these colonists, they seem like they're doing fairly well, but um, I think they could use a good mechanic. Yes, unfortunately, since we don't have our ship, we can't help them out by hauling some things around and delivering goods for them. That's all right. I uh, managed to find uh, another freighter captain. I think she'll take over that for now. Soren says, oh, well, that's good. Yes, it is. This planet has um, an abundance of ruins and an ancient culture. Unfortunately, they seem to have some guardians who are too keen on people going in and taking things. But, um... They both look like, oh, that's, in that's interesting. They didn't tell us about that when we were here before. I think there's a sort of understanding that no one is supposed to go in there. But I don't know. Maybe maybe you could find a way to speak with them. At least go and look. Soren, I know you would enjoy them. They're beautiful. Ah, that sounds like something very interesting. We might have to see about that. Just be careful if you do go there. Uh, they weren't exactly um, keen on visitors when I went by. When you say they, who exactly are you talking about? To be honest, I have no idea. My friends refer to them as the spirits. The spirits? Chris asks. Yes, they, um, well, I don't really actually know what they are. They're powerful, though. They can make you see things that aren't real and can make Sith vessels disappear. They both look taken aback at that. Well, that is quite powerful. They must be somehow related to the Force, Sorin says. That is what one of my friends believes. We should, uh... I think perhaps we should see to, um... Fixing that arm of yours, Soren. Maybe they have a replacement here. I have a little money now. I could, uh, I could see if I could uh, get you something that at least works. He looks down at his arm, and he says, "Well, maybe if they have something, but I can still take care of myself. You don't have to feel like you have to take care of us now, Alexa." It's not exactly true, though, is it? I abandoned you, and caused you to get into trouble, to danger that you weren't, that you wouldn't have been in if I hadn't left. Well, if we had to choose between not seeing you again or going through this because we saw you again, I'd still choose this.
perhaps, but it doesn't make it right. I've turned into... I've turned into Kozili. Done the one thing that I thought I'd, I'd... that I promised I'd never do. They both look sad when you mention Kozili. And then Soren says, Well, the important thing is that we're all together now, even if your sister isn't with us. We should try to focus on the future that lies ahead of us rather than the past that lies behind us. <laughs> that, uh, that sounds like Jedi wisdom, Soren. Now that I know what that is. He laughs. Probably. And then Riss asks, So are you going to stay with us, Lexa? Well, I don't have anywhere else to go. The last time I left, you... Well, we all know what happened. And my uh, friends tell me that the world impending doom is over, so I don't have any plans to leave. I was doing a side job for a couple of years, but it's uh, nothing I can't put down for the time being. They both look really happy. Is there anything else that you wanted to do with that conversation? No. I'll just stay there and get them anything that they need and just continue talking and catching up and all that. Okay. Okay, so is there anything else that anyone wants to do? Yes. Okay, what does Elon want to do? I'm going I want to search for Emma Aurelius and see what I can dig up on the hollow net. I didn't get a chance to long ago. Okay. Yeah, you can make a gather information rule. I don't have to use neck on that. Okay. That is a nat 20. <laughs> Highly motivated. Okay. You uh, start searching through and, and you look through the records and try to remember uh, things that the Admiral mentioned about um, about the uh, like academy that she studied at to be an engineer and such. Um, but you have a difficult time trying to find anything. And like the more you look, the more confused it seems because um, you can't really find any trace of her. Uh, and you eventually like, you're certain that you should be getting hits on the searches that you're doing, but it seems like, like all records of her were completely purged from the records. Can I figure out why or who erased them?
mean, you might be able to try, but for all you learn from that search is that there's like absolutely no trace of her that you can find. Instead, can I look to see if there's been any news from terrorists or such? Like, uh, reports of deaths or anything? Maybe get into the police records or something? So you want to try to look at the terrorists, like security forces? Or at least the news, of... yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can make another roll for that. Same thing? Yeah. Unless you want to, well, if you want to try to hack into their actual databases, you probably need to roll use computer. No, I'm not going to hack into them yet. I will spend a force point on that just cause. Okay. Yeah, you search through all of those things and it seems like her uh, entire digital presence has like just gone off the hollow net and everything. Like there's not even a record of her death? Nope. All right. Yeah, if you wanted to learn more, you'd probably have to actually go to Terrace and look into their computer systems. Yeah, I would need like five minutes or so alone with their computers. Okay. And in that case, I'll go back to um, Origin and... Uh, sell them two heavy blaster pistols. And tell him? Or did you say sell? sell oh. Sell. <laughs> okay. Ah, Elon, welcome back again. Yeah, what are you looking friend. for this time? Uh, I'm needing to lighten my load. Uh, I just have two blaster, or heavy blaster pistols I need to get rid of. They're just going to weigh me down. Ah, I see. Well, unfortunately, those also require military permits. Don't suppose you have one for that, do you? And Elon will slowly open up his jacket, or is that, yeah, his jacket on one side where his blaster pistol sits. Lad, I have this one. You saw me with it when I was here the first time. 
I have a license for this one. Okay, are you trying to like use intimidation on him? Nope. He'll also pull out the license and show it. It, it's really legit. Okay. It's like, why are you asking me that? Kind of thing. Well, the good news is you might be able to get a slightly higher price for these then. But unfortunately, my customer base is still limited by the fact that it requires a license. Oh, that I know, that I know. And there's nothing special about these blaster pistols, right? Like, no f additional bonuses or anything? Just the 3D8s? Yeah, they're just regular. But they look like they're in better condition than those blaster rifles. And they have fully charged oh. stuff and everything. Yeah, uh, that's okay. Yep, then I'll sell them. Well, I could sell them, or I could buy them for about five fifty for both of them. These things are practically brand new, and you're wanting to only go 75%, maybe less than that on market value? Well, if you want to try to sell them for market value, I suggest you go elsewhere. But as you can see, there's only a small city here. Who has need of military-grade weaponry here? You're asking who has need of military-grade blaster pistols. Just about everybody has a need for a blaster pistol, friend. We all know self-defense and all that. Oh, these aren't regular blaster pistols, though. These are heavy blaster pistols. Of course, they give you a little bit more bang for your buck. Tell you what. Well, I wasn't expecting market value anyways. Uh, how about we do... How about we do a 650 for both? Okay, nope. roll persuasion. Pardon me, I mean 650 per each one. Okay, roll persuasion. Well, that's over double my original offer. I could do my original offer of 550, except for each pistol. But that's just eking out every last bit of profit I could possibly earn, so I couldn't possibly sell them <laughs> for more than that. Oh, you and I both know that you're lying through your teeth. You could sell these for- Would me. I do that? Elon just gives him a wink a very knowing wink. You know better than that. 600 even for both. Okay, Six, done. 600 for both. 600 per blaster. I <laughs> keep... <laughs> I keep screwing that up. That's my bad. It's 600 per blaster. <laughs> I know, John. Okay, you have yourself a deal, since, but only since these are in mint condition. Alright, lad. Thank you. I uh, just need, mostly need to get these off, since uh, they weigh me down a little bit too much, but thank you. Well, happy we could do business. Oh, I am too. Alright, you have a good day.
And then after that, that's about it. Um, Okay, does anyone else have anything that uh, they want to do? I'd like to finish up the deal with the shuttles. Okay. Yes. So there was... There's three shuttles. Uh, two. I, I'm not considering the other shuttle because I mean, the ship <laughs> that we took to Ventuin and did not return. Okay, so you're going to give him that one. So they will buy uh, both shuttles for a hundred thousand credits each. Yeah, I won't even argue the price with them. I'll just—I be... <laughs> don't think because would argue the price with them. Just assume they're giving him a fair deal, especially since everything that's gone on. Okay, because is now the proud owner of two hundred thousand credits. <laughs> Oh no. Someone steal the holocron from him, please. I do have Hive of Deception, but I think theft or pickpocketing is stealth. Hey, it's a crystal. Maybe you're you're compelled to destroy it. I have a bank account, thank you very much. So <laughs> the, oh wait, you're talking about the holocron. Yeah. Maybe 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 Lex is compelled to destroy it. <laughs> Well, I don't think that's going to go down very well with my cause. And also, like, I'll shave off whatever the cost of fixing buying parts from them for any spare parts they have to get Bob up and running. Even if I can't, they don't have enough to get him fully repaired. <laughs> Yeah, they have enough parts to get him up and running for like 5,000 credits. Okay, I'll cut that off of what I have. Okay, so I don't really have a directed plan for the epilogue, but I guess, so Kylar said there's going to be like a couple months period interlude between this end of this campaign and the next one. Right, Kylar? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, how are we going to have a group? <laughs> yeah, so does everyone want to try to say what their general plans are for their character? If they have questions for me about how those plans might turn out in the sort of near future. I am apparently supposed to head back to the Jedi Dantooine. So, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the other people on Thela, what are you guys going to do? And would you guys drop Kalani off at Dantooine? I have two things I want to accomplish. One is that I will tell everyone else that didn't hear about the deal I have with the Sith soldiers. And I want to, at some point, uh, take them, drop them off, and come back here. Which, with Bacaz's ability, I don't think would take us too long. Um, which they promised us 5,000 credits ahead. Um, so we, and I, I would split that up with everyone. And then the other thing I want to ask is, or I want to do, is have Riz... Um, 
examine the dreams that I've been having um, whenever he has time for that. So those are the only two things I want to accomplish throughout the months. Um, and then also, I guess when I, when those things are accomplished, I would start, uh, I would offer my services to, uh, Commander Sharp as security and help him in any way he needs securing the village, going on scouting missions, those types of things. Okay. I think after we do all of our traveling, uh, one of the things I'd want to do is the mission for the gambler and see if the others would help me with that. Because oh, oh don't worry. Ship functional. <clears throat> don't worry about that one. <laughs> I'll get to that. And let's see. I imagine once everything settles down, you know, we get back to, uh, to, uh, Thela. Kaz goes out and just into the wilderness and disappears for a while. Do I want to know what's going on with you? Listen, we just went through a whole bunch of stuff. He doesn't want to get dragged into anything else for a good solid month. He's on vacation. Uh, Elon will probably help Lex out as much as he can, while also you know, trying to leverage what connections he can uh, and getting access to records and whatnot, trying to figure out this great big puzzle that seems to go, be going on around and, and just in his general life as it seems. Okay, so Kalani, do you want to go to Dantooine? I'm supposed to. Uh, okay. Wow, in my notes I wrote, go the Dantooine. I meant go to Dantooine. <laughs> Kalani is going to go the Dantooine. Just go the Dantooine. Just, just do it. <laughs> okay, what is uh, Del doing? Um, he's finding Jashar and Ajak and the Liaxalims. That's what Dill's doing. Okay. So, when they arrive in ten days, are the Liaxalims still on Ventuine? Uh, no, they are not. They left word with the Resistance that they had to depart to go and find their brother. But we would have left where we, we would have told them where we were going. Yeah. But we, like she said, we left forwarding address. Okay, you guys went to the planet Macum Te. Another planet in the Outer Rim that's under Sith control. Spell that. Yeah. Are you sure that's not make them tea? Everyone get you get tea and you get tea. So wait, where, where are you guys going and when in the timeline? Like the first thing you guys do is this. The lyax limbs.
So would Dell try to uh, go to Macam? Yeah. Okay. What does Ajax do? Um. Well, while this was all going on, he's probably trying to track down his aunt and cousin. Okay, so Dell and Jashar go with the Laxalims, and Ajax does his own thing. Well, he kind of was looking to work with Dell to find out some stuff, so they're kind of putting together a merry band, I guess. Okay. The party of alts. The party of my <laughs> characters, like <laughs> roaming the galaxy, doing nonsense. Yeah, it's good to Much know that. It's just like how Clara goes around with me in her own TARDIS after she leaves. Ta <laughs> Wait, who goes off in their own TARDIS? Oh, that must be Dr. Twelve shenanigans. Never mind. <laughs> yep. I don't want to know about that. <laughs> I don't want to know. I think that's where I left off. Some pretty absurd shenanigans happen. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I left off, and I'm not quite sure why I held on that long. Why? Let's not. We don't talk about the doctor that shall not be named. Also known as YouTube, please be nice to us. It's spoilers, anyways, for something that doesn't exist in this universe, but. Spoilers! Also, that was like two years ago. Yeah, People that wasn't spoiled the, that wasn't, from that. Yeah, that that yeah. is their problem. Yes. That's not even that. That was like two, the two seasons ago. You do realize people complain about being spoiled by a video game that's ten years old. Yeah, well, people <laughs> like them. So. Uh, I blame the writers. <laughs> so, do we get to add credits now, or does that get accomplished? I really need to know how much loot I have before the next game starts. Yeah. Yeah, you can get the 55,000 credits. And split okay. them up between the four of you, I guess. Well, uh, I said I'd split up with who was still there. So whoever goes with me gets the credits. Elon would have gone with you. He's. Yeah. You have connections and resources that he wishes to borrow every now and then. Yeah, Picaz would have traveled with you guys for until like Lexa went back to Dila with Captain Sharp. Okay, so then that just leaves John went back to fight with Dirk in the resistance. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, so you find that by the time you guys get back. Uh, the resistance has made some pretty decent progress, mostly aided by the fact that it seems like a lot, like maybe half of the Sith forces seem to have left the planet, and uh, the pseudo governor Darth Ereko had not been seen in ten days, and they also had uh, started broadcasting. The uh, video that your little droid took of you saving everybody from the prison and nonchalantly killing a bunch of Sith and being awesome. <laughs> and they started like hacking into the uh, security or like the uh, ne networks and displaying that. So they had some new recruits to the resistance. That's good. And they give you back your little camera droid thing when you get back. Yeah, I think Eagle went to Dantooine before you guys got the 55,000 credits. So it's just 55,000 credits, but three ways, I guess. That's 1,833.3 credits. So let's you mean 18,333. Yeah, what are you trying to pull, Zary? <laughs> Did I? Oh, I did not... Never mind. Yeah, we're on to you. 
<laughs> You're on to my lack of math skills. Good job. <laughs> Woohoo! Never trust the dice again. <laughs> I mean, because... It's not really a secret. I think because we'll give, like, Lexa and Elon 20 grand. Ooh. Each. Or both. <laughs> You subtracted the money. I was getting about to do that. <laughs> I did? I didn't. Oh, wait, no, my brain. I, I, I saw the experience. <laughs> the experience. Oh. <laughs> 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 it's the right number to be in that range, too. I must be a secret technopath because I wasn't even in the Royal 20 window. <laughs> That's how we can change the, the die rolls. Ah, yes. My unconscious technopath abilities. <laughs> and then let's see. How much is what you split with us from the bounties? 18,333. In this one session, I have gone from like 250 credits to... Uh, forty eight thousand five hundred eighty three. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, let's see eighteen thousand five hundred fifty three. Eighteen thousand three hundred thirty three. I need to buy some upgrades for myself. <laughs> and an arm for Thorin. Yes, and an arm for Thorin. No, he's fine. And a new Scarlet Destiny. Well, that's a little bit out of my price range. <laughs> Plus, I don't know if I want them flying right now. <laughs> it's too dangerous. It's just too much power to, to, to Kylar. <laughs> <laughs> More hot, no. <clears throat> <laughs> Although, at Kylar, in the coming weeks, I think I'm going to message you and talk about some of the things I buy on Coruscant. Because there's okay. no way I'm dealing with Ojem. Yeah, no. oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, you'll get no pr no haggle pricing on Curacao, unless you want to go like to the underworld. Then you might get some asshole prices and blasters to the face. Would you prefer to perhaps talk? Or you can with... go to Narshada. If you want to go to Narshada, you can get lots of stuff. Or because if you want droid parts, you should go to Narshada. Shush. I mean, yeah, no. I'd probably be willing to go there as well. Oh no. <laughs> That's probably a really good place to get some of the other stuff I want to. Because everything goes through Narshada. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up the epilogue. Hooray, we did it! <laughs> the question is, how are we going to have a group next time? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about <laughs> it. That's the, that's, the, that's the GM. Yeah. It's going to be easy to track down at least a couple of us uh, as we are centered in or around Thela. Um, Elon probably You're all on the planet lived. that I want you to be on, so well, you guys are um, good. Yeah, don't worry, Eagle. I've got a plan for you. Jedi, it's easy to... You get a mission to go here. Don't yeah. do it. Yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. I, I, there are very valid reasons why I would send you here. You're good. Don't worry about it. I want to see that conversation. She gets home to Dantooine. She's all happy, and then the council comes back to her and is like, "Hey, yeah, you, the planet you left that you don't like, we're sending you back there. Have fun." Hey, she gets like two months <laughs> off. What? You're you you sending me to Narshada? Oh, no. <laughs> Why are you? Wait, do you mean somewhere else? Why you do this? I really don't like Fila. What? Oh, Thila. Okay. I anyway, so do you guys want to do the fun Darson droids thing and have me read my original three to four pages of campaign ideas for the campaign <laughs> and then see how much crazy stuff we did? Yes. Yes. 
Sure. <laughs> okay, some of it is With still remaining to be secrets because yes. of... I now have control over the redacted sections. Oh, speaking of that, I need to make it official now and switch GMs for the page. So, yes, is there anything... Helpful. No, my powers! <laughs> You do now, Kyrath. Here's the time. I'm just imagining you just yelling, I'm Maldi. <laughs> I mean, the only thing I should really do is I should clean up all the... Well, can you do it after I uh, read the campaign notes and then while we talk, I'll just clean up my maps and stuff and move them to the archive. All right, well done. And the other characters that I made and everything. But first, I'll read the campaign ideas. So this is the campaign ideas that... Let's see... When I created this Word document, I created it on August 6th, 2016. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's been a while. Okay, yeah, so just a few. the campaign ideas. And some of it changed a lot, even like in the process of actually making the campaign. But anyway, so it starts <laughs> off, it says, The villain of the campaign is a powerful Sith alchemist who is trying to use a dark side force creature slash entity to conquer the Republic and rule the Sith. He returned with Revan as part of his fleet, but he is redacted secrets. He is a scholar of dark force stuff and wanted to follow a lead into this uh, area. He knows that there is a secret asteroid base, but can't find it until he follows the players there, sort of by a self-fulfilling prophecy. He eventually finds the mobile asteroid base after the players lead him there. He uses a Sith ritual to create a powerful dark side entity. The entity takes over a person's body and transforms it into a dragon-like creature. If the creature is defeated, it dissipates into energy and is captured in a Sith amulet. The master can use this amulet to transfect the creature's essence into a new host. Each time it takes a new host, the creature grows stronger and less humanoid and more draconian. It can use the force and eventually becomes immune to opposing force powers. Not really. <laughs> Apparently that didn't happen. It can manifest tendrils of dark force energy like Darsana. Then, okay, the exchange is also involved in this story somehow. There are two bounty hunters that are trying to capture the Force creature independently of the heroes and the alchemist. They are working for an elderly client known as Mr. R. Okay, so now the prologue notes. The campaign begins with the players controlling alternative characters who are all part of a large Sith force attacking Coruscant. They learn that it is the last bastion of the Republic and that all surviving Jedi have rallied within it, including Bastila and the Jedi Masters from KOTOR, including Vandar. They go down in a strike craft, land, and mount an attack on the temple itself. They are part of, of the advanced force. There is a commanding officer who gives them a mission briefing. He is a very powerful Sith Master. Some of them are elite troopers, but some are force users. Well, we changed that. They are all OP and level 20. We also changed that. They were level 16. They fight against Jedi until the Masters come out and hopefully kill some of them. Their commanding officer kills one of them like Rook. Then an enormous shadowy dark force dragon appears and kills all the masters with ease. This is the end of the intro, which was actually one of the visions experienced by a Keldor member of the Watch Circle named Delphirn. Okay, then the introduction. Talking about Delphirn, in his other visions, he saw that the group of heroes was involved in helping him to prevent this possible future. So he seeks them out and tells them that their assistance is vital in order to prevent the entire galaxy from being taken over by a ruthless cis master and monster. He might tell slash show them parts of the vision if they don't believe him. He knows that they need to go to a certain Sith-occupied planet to the dwelling of a very rich man. He has an extensive hidden library of Sith artifacts that could contain a vital clue to start the quest. They eventually find a way into his fortress mansion, possibly by posing as guests at a gala he is hosting. One of the people in his employ is Zeriana's character, who is actually a replica droid, also redacted. She has no memory of this, however, and is currently wandering around she does have redacted that she's unaware of. However, something, a voice tells her to assist and join the party of heroes. Del also tells them that she must come along. Because's spirit friend uh, senses that she's friendly and good to have around, but can't really tell why. Prior to the mission, Del tells Ajak about a vision he had. In order for their quest to succeed, Ajak must appear to sacrifice himself, allowing the others to escape, and also allowing him to sneak around and complete a secret side mission undetected with Del's associate from the Watch Circle, Jashar Uthalian. They sneak into the man's secret collection of Sith artifacts. Kalani, or someone, turned out to be Pekaz, can be drawn to an old tome that describes the details of several dark side creatures, including the Darafan, which are dark side energy creatures that can inhabit other people's bodies. Dell finds the artifact, which appears to be a vase, but its geometric decorations are actually part of an algorithm that describes a function to plot the course of the Sith asteroid base. While they are there, they are interrupted or discovered somehow. A large Sith force descends on the compound while they are escaping. The general in front of the group of troopers is the commander from the vision, so the players and Dell recognize him to be insanely powerful. 
At this point, Dell says that one of them is going to die. He says that he will sacrifice himself to let them escape, but this is when Ajax steps in and volunteers to stay behind. They all turn into a rear servant tunnel, and Ajax seals it off. He detonates an explosive device, and there is a huge explosion. If the others try to sense him, there is no signs of life because he drank some sort of poison derived from Dell's amphistaph uh, that makes him very hard to detect in the force. The others manage to escape back to the ship. However, they were unable to escape with the vase and sell. Instead, Dell sees a vision of them jumping in a certain direction at an exact moment in time. So that's what they do. Okay, part one. They end up being pulled from hyperspace as their course intersects that with that of the asteroid base. By this time, the Sith have already made it to the base, but the party doesn't know that they were the ones who helped the Sith find the base. Uh, the base is filled with Sith troopers and acolytes. They find, not really, apparently that didn't happen. They find the amulet and destroy it, accidentally binding the creature's life force to themselves. Uh, Lexa's programming voice tells her to destroy it, and the Jedi can sense a very evil presence coming from it, so hopefully they also want to destroy it. Although taking it with them would serve almost as well. The mini-boss after that room is a Dara fan. Hopefully they read the tome and have in-character knowledge about how to beat it. <laughs> then they make their way to the central part of the asteroid. The master has created the creature and set it loose on them in a dark, creepy catacomb-like maze. It hunts them from the shadows until they eventually defeat it. They destroy the creature, and it dissipates in a burst of dark energy. Unknown to the players, by destroying the amulet, the Force creature resides in their life energy. Very high use of Force check when sensing something nearby might reveal to the characters that there is some strange dark presence at the constant edge of their awareness, but they can't pinpoint it. Or a Nat 20 might reveal that it's similar to the creature's energy after they've encountered it multiple times. Whenever they come into contact with anyone, there is an opportunity for the creature to infect them. At this point, the Dark Presence leave their Force era until they defeat it again. The person whom this creature infests can shapeshift between human form with no memories of the shift and the dragon-like form. So part one in the intro went pretty much how it says in, the, in this book <laughs> thing. Okay, now part two. When the heroes defeated the creature, the alchemist leaves the station after he realizes that they destroyed the amulet. He thinks that the creature has been lost, so he goes to Sulk. He also destroys their ship on the way out. So the heroes have to rig a communications array on board the asteroid and contact the Republic for assistance. Eventually, a large cruiser arrives, but this delay gives the bounty hunters time to be hired and close in on the ship. <laughs> the cruiser's captain is very charismatic, and hopefully they all like him, especially Aelond. His wife is the chief engineer of the ship. She has green hair and bears a striking resemblance to Alora. He invites them to join him and his wife for dinner after they are rescued. They then go to their quarters before going to meet with him on the bridge. When they arrive at the bridge, they find the captain dead in his chair. Two bounty hunters reveal themselves behind the door to the bridge as it seals them inside. The room fills with knockout gas. Uh, the players wake up in energy cells. They have been given neural inhibitor bands that prevent them from using force powers. The hunters say that they are tracking a powerful force creature, and hopefully the players tell them that they killed it. The story of the creature is actually a common myth on many of the nearby planets and the nearby systems, which the players will be told about if they start talking to local people like at the first planet. The hunters are upset and leave the room somehow, possibly by means of Dell's hidden amphistaph. They escape their cells and run through the ship. Hopefully they decide to escape rather than try to retake the ship. <laughs> the hunters have brought a small army of droids that fill the ship. During their escape, they realize that something is terrorizing the room that the ship's crew is being held in. It is a slightly different version of the creature they fought before. They kill it to protect the rest of the crew, and then the bounty hunters pursue them. At some point, they also encounter the captain's wife and have to tell her that he was killed. <laughs> Except it ended up being the exact opposite. <laughs> they make it to the hangar and escape in the ship that is damaged in the process. Perhaps most of the crew is killed by the creature so that the party doesn't feel obligated to rescue them. <laughs> if the players dig deeply, they can discover that the bounty hunters docked on board a small ship that rendezvoused with the ship during their first night after their arrival. It is actually the ship that they escaped on. They can track down the ship's last destination and fly to it, a small nearby world. Perhaps it also has some records about their earlier flight path or their employee, so they can download it and decipher it later. So we can see part two went quite differently. <laughs> then part three. They land on the planet and need to get repairs to their ship. They also try to look around for clues and or contact the Republic or someone for assistance. The Sith Master has sent five Shadow Assassins to kill the party because they think that he foiled his, they foiled his plan. They track them down individually while the party is trying to do stuff. One of the Assassins is actually possessed by another Darafan, which possessed him while on board the Sith Asteroid. Eventually, the creature attacks again. The Darafan might give them some info since it's not actually loyal to or working for the Alchemist. The party is notified that the Shadow is like rampaging and went into a building. When they go in it, they only find people, but the police who are watching the building say that it never left. Eventually, one of the people inside transforms back into the creature. The bounty hunters arrive and try to capture it while also stopping the party from killing it. The assassins see that the creature reappeared and return to tell their master. They also can talk to people and find out 
who saw the bounty hunters perhaps paying someone to decrypt their data or tracking back them to the local exchange office. They could bribe or attack the people there to get the message from Mr. R and somehow track it back to its source, Narshada. Eventually, they leave the planet by ship, possibly the repaired one or a stolen one, and by this time, probably try to track down the bounty hunter's boss or the Sith Master. Um, if they talk with Mr. R, he will tell them that he's trying to destroy the creature, and the only way he could do so is by hiring bounty hunters. They might offer, they might try to offer to eliminate the creature for him. Um, Redacted stuff. Every planet that the players go to, every couple days, the creature reappears and strikes again. Every time, it is more powerful. They eventually confront the Sith Alchemist back on the mobile asteroid base again. He uses Sith sorcery to draw the beast from their aura into himself for a final battle against the creature. Just as they defeat it, Ajak and Jashar come in with a light side artifact that cleanses the party from the corruption and the creature is lost. The light side artifact was found by them on Ventuin as a remnant from the Jedi who originally defeated the original Shadow. So this, the Sith Master regains his original form and is angry, and they fight him in the final boss battle. <laughs> Boy, did we go off the rails. So no mention of us going to Dantooine, to Narshada, to <laughs> Paris. Well, I put in there that you might go to Narshada to talk with Mr. R. You went to Narshada, but you didn't actually end up talking with Mr. R. It's not my, my fault. Everyone rolled really terrible treat injury things when I was poisoned. <laughs> Ouch, but dang, Kyla, there's no uh, coming back from, like, you did everything you could to purposely kill off Ajax and make everyone think he was dead. <sighs> like, that's kind of messed up. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was supposed to just reappear seemingly at random with yep. the artifact already. Yep. <sighs> but I spoiled that. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. That was interesting, too. Yes, it was. Okay, that last one is a natural 20 uh, on punching Del. I'm not there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I think what happens is he asks Picaz to open up a portal <laughs> and he punches Del <laughs> from across uh, the right. galaxy. Alright, can I take away your GM powers now? Uh, no, I didn't uh, actually clean up anything I was going to clean up. Please help. <laughs> nice. You can always just leave it for your brother. I mean, come on. <laughs> nope. Ooh, I have to figure out how Shia comes back. That's going to be the real trick. Yep. And what he's been doing on Manon. I mean... Yeah, but he's only been 25 been days. Yeah, it hasn't been that long. <laughs> but then plus a couple, a couple extra months. But now I get to throw like just like bombs at you guys all the time. Because, oh, I took damage. Look, you get bonus hit points. Nonsense. No. No, uh, no throwing bombs. The results no. of all of the stuff we do in between now and next campaign... And with that, I will close out our recording. Thank you guys for joining us uh, live. This is a very great game. Thank you, uh, Kairath, for the GMing. Uh, had a, gr a really great time. Interesting that it lasted quite so long, but it was still really fun. Uh, thank you guys for joining us in on YouTube. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the story as much as we did. Uh, we're continuing on with Season 3. Kylar gets to be DM this time, or GM this time, and uh, what shall he break this time? <laughs> I'm not going to break anything. There will be nothing broken. You tell yourself that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, and y'all have a good night, and God bless. <laughs>